Right now, for more on Boeing, we are joined by David Bonson. He is managing partner and chief investment officer of the Bonson Group, which has about $2 billion in assets under management. David, thank you for being here today. Good to be with you. Um, what do you think? The stock market was up on this. Boeing shares were up on this yesterday. But it, it sounds like there still are details that need to be worked out. There are and there will continue to be, and I don't expect it to be a straight line up from here. I think that there will be other hiccups that come because the whole thing is kind of messy to begin with. But whether this good news that came yesterday had come or not, our conviction had not changed. This is a transitory event. And you have a company with a balance sheet that was at no point ever existentially threatened here. They had the free cash flow generation from all sorts of business lines they were going to pull through. Um, I've never seen a company have such a difficult year be the source of so much understandable attention uh, negative, and yet the stock is up 14% on the year. We talk as if this has been this collapse. It's well off of its highs. We had trimmed some of our position at $415 earlier in the year. The stock stayed up there for a little while. Now here in the 350s, it's still up substantially, not only on the year, but over the last couple of years. $10 billion cash on hand. We, we believe they're going to get through this, but we don't think it's going to be an easy ride for the next few months. Dave, what, what exactly was the good news yesterday? It was, it was clear as yeah. mud to me. There was yeah. some maybe good news, there was some less good news, and the, yet the stock ripped. Yeah, you no, know, it's a good question, but I think the answer is that there's been the expectation that news was coming, that a return to service was going to be delayed. And news came that they are absolutely not anticipating a delay beyond that is going to go into January. So they're revving things up in December and expect to have planes flying in January. There's been some analysts anticipating it could be kicked off all the way into April or May of next year. So the idea that three or four months further is not apparently on the table, that's what the good news was in the market yesterday. So Ralph Nader has come on this, this show yes. and uh, talked quite a bit about the actual structure of the plane. If, you, know, you almost get the sense like, oh, this is a plane that was just built to fall out of the sky. And it's a draconian perspective. But if you take it all the way to the extreme, what does Boeing look like in the worst case scenario for the, for the max? Well, I mean, in the very worst case scenario, the kind of ultimate tail risk, you can't price it in because if Ralph were correct and all the planes are falling out of the sky, I guess nobody would be ordering Boeing airplanes. I also oh, think nobody... I'm referring, I'm referring to the 737 MAX not coming back to service, let's say, for some much, much yeah, longer period. If that were the case, then it would represent about $5 billion a year of free cash flow coming off the table for Boeing. Now, they are generating $13 billion of profits on $100 billion of revenue, okay? It's a good margin business. And it's been one of the biggest free cash flow generators in market history, but it has been the biggest returner of capital to shareholders for the last, since about the year 2000. They've been growing the dividend over 15% per year. Many people who own Boeing long term have a dividend that is almost what they paid for the stock right now, year over year. So they are a diversified company. Now, in terms of 737 MAX, worst case scenario, it would totally redefine the company. But how do you price a six standard deviation event into one single stock? I don't think that was ever realistically going to happen. I freely admit if it had, it would have been significantly worse on the downside for the company. But they've managed the process very well, considering how difficult of a process it is to manage. I, I don't agree with Mr. Nader's assessment, uh, a plane that was built to fall out of the sky. I think you're talking about a couple outlier events that were very, very unfortunate. But ultimately, this is a well-run company, and they have a good plane. If that's the case, have you been adding to your position, or are you waiting? We have. We've been adding at every opportunity to add new cash pro, pro rata. What we haven't done is raise the target waiting. We've kept it steady. So we wanted to recognize the risk embedded but, and not get greedy on the upside, but we didn't lower the waiting through it. We've stayed at the same target we had at the beginning of the year. Okay. And that target is what? Uh, it's 2% of our dividend growth portfolio. Right. Yeah. David, thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. Thanks, David.